33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Danto Show that you are tuned into. Coming to you live from the South Coast. We are here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time, 12 to 3 Pacific Time. And, of course, uh, starting today, back on in Madison, Wisconsin, from 3 to 6 a.m. Central Time. Uh, so good morning to you there in Madison, W.I., uh, it is uh, great to uh, have um, all of you in the um, southern Wisconsin area listen is, listening to us. So we're going to uh, be hopefully talking to our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield momentarily out there in Seattle, WA, WI, WA, Washington State. Uh, and as soon as we get him, Freddie, just let me know in the IFB when we have him ready to go. I uh, just sent you some more information on, on how to reach Mark as well. So hopefully we can uh, get uh, Mark on radio or video and we'll get that uh, very soon. I just want to make a note, uh, and this, of course, uh, revolves around National Football League and uh, having a chance to talk about this for next week. We're going to try to get our good friend, um, um, our good friend, Mr. Uh, uh, NFL Network um, and uh, Patrick Claibon of, uh, of the NFL Network on this. But uh, last night, despicable situation. Um, and it's despicable not because of what happened, but once again, uh, the NFL and concussions. Great movie by Will Smith. And uh, that's what, um, you know, occurred. The second time is he was hit in the head, hit his head. They called it a back injury to the Miami Dolphins staff. Then again, against Cincinnati last night on a show, on a network that, you know, nobody gets because Amazon, you got to pay for the games. Uh, I got to see the replay on the NFL Network, and you know he got hit again, and he and he got out of concussion, and he actually flew, which is not a smart thing to do when you have a concussion. Um, and you know, there's now the NFL PA is is continuing an investigation. The NFL is as an investigation. Who knows if there's be other outside forces? But this is crazy stuff, folks. You know, I love sports. I love watching the NFL. I'm actually more of a baseball, hockey guy. Hockey gets a lot of concussions too. You got to stop this. You got to make it safe for players to play. You know, there was a report from one of the um, athletes today uh, talking on ESPN's uh, first take, and um, you know, it to me is uh, pretty pretty obvious. Thirty nine percent, thirty nine percent of uh, of parents who have uh, shy, you know student age athletes, you know, between the ages of uh, you know ten and eighteen, they don't want their kids playing football because of this, these concussions and these violent acts. Something got to be done. Something got to be done, and, and I'm hoping that we can uh, uh, get Patrick and some other folks to give us some perspective on that next week. All right. We have found our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield. He is in Seattle, WA, in the great 206. He is the Renaissance man. He is the musician, as you can see with the guitar. If you are watching us on Facebook Live, uh, you'll soon hear it as if you are just a radio guy a gal. Uh, and, of course, he is the great uh, executive director of Democracy Watch News, a activist who has been out there on the protest side. He is Mark Taylor Canfield, and he is live on the Jeff Santo Show right now. Having a good time, baby, now. Having a ball. Daddy, don't do what you like. Don't do it at all. But you got to all right. see and now you're doing fine. Well, what about the people who scream and shout? I said, you in 50 years and maybe they'll work it out. But I gotta have me a good time, baby. All the time. All the time. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's MTC. There's not many talk shows in America, folks, that end their week with a great guitarist, a great musician, and a renaissance man. And that's what you get here on the Jeff Santos Show. See, Madison, you're waking up in the morning here, and there's your first thing. You get a little bit of wake-up music. Good morning, Madison, courtesy M MTC. Mark, how are you, man? Oh, man, I'm doing great. I, I'm... I had to wear the sunglasses to do that bluesy stuff, but I'm. Uh, I was almost going to join you, but I couldn't find them in time. <laughs> uh, the Blues Brothers, right? I love that. Yeah, movie. you know. They wrecked more cars in that movie than exactly. any other movie in history. 
we're on a mission from God. There you yeah, go. Anyway, I love uh, Belushi, Lisa Franklin, actually. James Brown. Oh my God, what a great movie! Mm, if yes, you haven't yes, seen yes. it, see it, see it twice, no, three times. It great, 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 sure, great uh, Ricardo, uh, music in there, man. Cap Calloway, you know, yes. I mean, I mean, it's great stuff. Oh, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. Uh, Belushi and Anchor did an incredible job with that. But I, you know, it's been a crazy week. But there's been mm. some amazing things happening, Jeff. Like. The Iranian soccer team, uh, well, football, you know, that's what they call it internationally, right, uh, right, right, covering right. their flags during the opening of their game. That was amazing. That took so much courage. You have students, high school students in West Virginia and in Virginia, because of Yonkin, walking out of class because of these uh, uh, attempts to suppress transgender and gay rights. Uh, it's been an amazing, you've got Republicans, high profile Republicans endorsing Democrats in races where Trump has backed the Republican candidate in yeah. Arizona, Sylvania, Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Kansas. What is going on, Jeff? Is this the same world that uh, I went, you know, when I went to bed last night, is this the same world or is this a different one? I don't know. No, it's, it's, it changes it's, every day, man. This is, this is it. And, and I'm telling you. You know, it, it's only going to get worse. You know, we've been talking all day, and you 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 understand this, and your governor Jay Inslee understands this. The climate change issue. I mean, you know, look what's happening in Florida, and and you know, it's, this is not just one of those. Oh, it happens, uh, you know, every once in a while. This is going to continue to keep happening. You know, the weather forecast is sound like you know, category four, category five. You know, you don't, never see this. You're going to keep seeing it again. You know, this is reality. It's not wow. only here; it's all over the world. And we need to understand, and, and the only way to respond is to stop building these monstrosities, you know, on Miami Beach and all the places along the coasts and in, in, in a state that's flat on landfill. And, you know, I mean, this is not smart stuff. And I'm hoping that the president understands, look, we got to take care of people first, rescue them. But we can't keep rebuilding, you know, the same uh, landfill on the same periods, same places where it's on the water. Uh, and in the same materials that are going to be used. You cannot do that. We're living in a different place and we need to change it. Hey, up here in Washington State, it's mm -hmm. uh, late, it's September 30th. It's going to be 80 degrees today. That's not normal. Um, That's not there, normal. You know, it's nice, it's nice if you want to go kayaking in late summer. We've yeah. always had late summers, but <laughs> not this one. And, you know, then we had then we had the forest fires again. So the air quality was bad there for a while, which made it hard for me to kayak. But when I did get to go out on the Salish Sea, on the Puget Sound, uh, places like Bainbridge Island and Friday Harbor and the San Juans, just blow your mind, Jeff. It, it really reminds us why we love to live here in this state. I've had some of the most spiritual, mystical experiences out on the water lately. It's just amazing. I had a, you know, a seal pop up right next to my boat and say hi to me. It's that kind of an environment. And it just reminds us every was day. It? Was it, uh, it was Sally a, the seal, or was uh, who who was the seal? Did they they uh, did they want to like you know set up a dinner reservation with you? What's the deal? All I know is that I was filming out there because <laughs> I've been doing these little documentaries about my trips, ah, and I, okay. I hear the splash of the water. I took look to my left, and right next to the kayak, there is this uh, seal sticking its head up out of the water. And by the way, seals have really big teeth, so don't mess with them if you know if, if they're not acting yeah. friendly. But this yeah. one is act, acting friendly and just wanted to splash around and have fun like an otter, you know, you know how seals are. So, but it did remind me why it's so important for us to deal with these issues. And you know, every time I go out in nature here, I'm I'm just so astounded by the natural wonder. Filming the sunset on the Olympic Mountains from the Salish Sea. I mean, you just don't get that, you know, everywhere in the country. And it just reminds us why we need to protect this. Uh, the Puget Sound, the Salish Sea is so precious. We have the orcas out there and all these sea uh, creatures, uh, mollusks and crustaceans and waterfowl and mammals out there. We need to protect them and we need to do everything we can to uh, confront this. And I, I wish that, you know, Greta Thunberg were our president because I think we've probably, yeah. we might get somewhere. Wouldn't that be cool? But, you know, I, way, I gotta I, I gotta put on the dark shirt here because it's it's a Friday afternoon and you know we, we wanted to wear you know the sport coat today because of uh, a first day back and even though people on radio well, can, that's really, rock and roll. can watch as well. Now you can but, join my band. 
Yeah, well, yeah, yeah anytime, sure. man. You know, I mean, I I, I do backup singing. Band. No worries. You know, I I can I can yeah. I can do that. Um, I used to be able to play the drums, but I think I'm gonna have to take some refreshing for us. Oh wow, I'm always looking for a drummer. So that's there my, you go. That's my problem. That's not a Seattle. I've told you that. I need a drummer. You know. All right. But, uh, well, maybe I'll audition for you. Um, but you know, I look way, at you, Joe. Biden. I've I've had some major disagreements, obviously, with Mr. Biden, uh, President Biden, and his Wall Street backers. Um, but yeah, me too. Thanks. I no longer owe any student debt, Jeff. Wow. Good stuff. That's nice. Although, That's nice. although there there are some things that he's he's trying to pull back on. So this it's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. So, you know, it's, it's um, helped. There, there are other. Point, yeah, yeah. Oh, and by the way, but, I would be wearing a American hat. credit, and he's pushing pushing the uh, pushing the right progressive agenda. We Thanks some, to yeah, Bernie Sanders, as you can see behind me here. You know the 2016 uh, sign that I have above me here, and you know this is—you just lost your video. Let me see if I can fix that here. All right, okay. Well, anyways, it's the Sanders sign behind me. It's been been there ever since we started doing video a couple months ago. But here, here, and that I look at it, um, Mark, I look at what we are at right now. Um, you know, this is a time to to for Democrats and progressives. And we had on our good friend Larry Cohen earlier today from uh, formerly the president of Communication Workers of America and now at Our Revolution. And that union training really helped he and Greenpeace and others to go out there and stop this this side deal that Manchin had put in there and that Schumer had basically okayed, you know, to get uh, Build Back Better, you know, junior done, IRA, um, you know, to get good... Uh, landmark legislation on 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 the uh, on the environment and other things, but he put the side deal in, which would have destroyed everything. But thankfully, a lot of progressives got involved: Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, others, Ed Markey, and they stopped it in the Senate. Exactly, and Gordon, most of the Democrats in the House, a good uh, hundred of them, anyways. Uh, thanks to uh, your friend and mine. Uh, although we got to get her on the program, maybe we'll do it with you uh, sometime, Miss Jayapal there. And, uh, you know, her progressive caucus, which is about 95 strong, you know, they were all uh, against this this crazy deal. So there you go. It's a great uh, perspective. Um, look, Mark, I that mean, you know, there, yeah. there, there's an example of how people can mobilize on an issue like that. It worked and it needs it to does. continue. And I, I'm sure Mila Jayapal will continue to do that. That's just the nature of the way she does politics. She's a lot like Shama Swan, her city council member. She's always on a campaign, <laughs> you know. There's always some <laughs> issue that she's yeah. today. She never backs off. She never just well, kicks back. you need back to have and, that know, persistency, particularly yeah. when you get to Washington D.C. because you're inundated with lobbyists. You know, I used to I used to walk around the Capitol and you would see all these people in gray suits, sometimes blue suits, and they would be you know are are, the, are really really tight dress. And they'd be walking into the uh, offices of the senators and, oh, we want to meet with you. Here's some peanuts or, uh, from, you know, if you're from Georgia or someplace or here's some uh, chocolate from, you know, Hershey, PA, whatever. And they go in there and they just sort of bribe the members of the U.S. Senate. And, of course, the entire Republican Party has been, you know, bought and paid for for over 40 years. And, you know, and a lot of Democrats, unfortunately, are, too. And it's like people like Sanders and Jayapal and AOC and others, you know, that kind of stand tall. We need more of them. You know, that's the problem yes and by the way if you ever see anybody in seattle wearing a suit and tie especially if it's a starched white shirt and a, a <laughs> typical brooks brothers jacket they're not yes, from here yes. we we're talking about here. that yesterday even the corporate people do not are are casual friday every day here so if you see suits in seattle they're either a jazz musician <laughs> or maybe like me a blue kind of guy but uh yeah they're 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 not you're not going to find them at city hall because nobody wears a suit and tie there at least nobody I, that i know um by the way i, I wanted to mention friends band um uh the martial law band and also this uh, another band that my friend rick is in we're out on uh the lakes lake washington and lake union here the other day on a boat playing rock and roll jeff and it sounded great they literally wow. put the drum set pa system on a boat got some kind of a portable generator and they had a really good sound system. You could hear it halfway across the lake. And it's the second time this year that people have done concerts on the lakes where you can just so kind of kayak right up to the boat. I and, presume that and once, know, since it's a lake, you could get people all on, on all sides, you know, having a chance yes. to sort of listen and, and party on, right? 
yeah and then he was just like you like, mark what are you doing he's like he hands me the mic he's like sing you know so i'm like <laughs> okay should i get out of the kayak he's like no it's a remote mic you can sing from wherever you want i'm like okay wow so yeah Very so cool. i've done uh, national radio and tv shows from a kayak now uh i've done uh rock concerts from a kayak uh i guess you know i'll just i'll, I'll have like the the world record for the most activities done in a kayak by one person or something at one point there you like, go. I, I yet to do um any recording on the kayak but that would be interesting to actually record a song out there with the ambient sounds that would be nice you know i haven't thought about that so i'll try that i know oh, it sounds like know, something eddie better would do yeah you should bring your I significant other out there with you and you know and, and have some fun in the kayak too i mean you know all clean and all but um you know, oh by the it, way uh, Yes, yes, Harvey. It was so great seeing him on your show, and and you know I know he's a big Green Bay fan. I'm sorry, folks, that I'm not wearing my Mariners hat today. I would be, but my yes. girlfriend borrowed it. Go Mariners, go! I, she's got it. I don't think I'm getting it back. It's one of those kind of things where <laughs> it's a permanent problem <laughs> because she likes to go to the games. So yeah, the uh, Mariners are I kicking. Guess, yes, yes, I'm I'm rooting for you guys, man. You know, you and you in uh, Cleveland may match up. It's going to be tough for me because I like both teams, uh, because both cities are, are, are great cities and and so forth. But uh, I'm hoping you beat particularly I Tampa Bay. Better. I cannot stand Tampa Bay and their their cheap way of doing things, and they play in that mausoleum down there with dirty fish tanks, and uh, it's, it's, ugh, I just don't like that at all. Well, at least we're not playing in the, the analytics too. Yeah, at least well, we're not in the I actually. I don't know if I ever told you this, Mark. I actually attended the Kingdom, and actually there were people there, unlike in Tampa, where there's like 12 people at the ballpark there. Um, <laughs> sorry, Florida. That's just the way it did. I'm saying it like the way it is. I watch baseball all the time, and there's never more than 15,000 people there, and it holds 70, I think. Uh, so in the Kingdom, I saw Ken Griffey make a great catch against the Red Sox. I think it was 1994, 1995. And, and it was such a... It was a great, great uh, environment, and of course, back in those days, those are the '90s. Griffey, Jay Buhner, Edgar Martinez, all that, all that team. Fantastic to see it. I would have loved to have seen a game at the new uh, Safeco or whatever they call it now, T-Mobile Park. Um, but uh, that's the trip that we I'm going to have to take to go visit you, my man. We can do a live show and all that, maybe from Safeco. Yeah, now it's or maybe from the kayak, get a bigger one. Yeah, that would. <laughs> Well, yeah, we would, you know, what I've been thinking was would be a great trip is just to grab the kayaks and take the ferry to Bainbridge Island or something and kayak around there because oh, it's so yeah. beautiful around there. It's like a 20 minute, half hour trip across the bay and, and just traveling across the Elliott Bay is really beautiful. You get to see the mountains and everything. So it would be a nice trip. I'm probably going to do that within the next couple of days. So I will do a scouting trip to see where okay. the, the best places are over there. But there's some great pubs and a, a cute small towns over there where that cater to tourists so there's plenty of places to go hang out and have great clam chowder i know you think that boston has the best but we do try it <laughs> like it i know you will i but, mean yeah, i give you guys um, the best salmon in the world but you know you give clam chowder we got it we got it Believe yeah me. i mean literally i went to the grocery store yesterday and by the and way had fresh if you ever have a thing called clam cakes which is southern new england's actually treat rhode island Southeastern Massachusetts, very good too. Like like a yeah, crab we cake. Yeah, we don't find those cake. here. No, no you don't find those here at the seafood restaurants. They just don't seem to stay here. So that's a that's a New England thing, I think. Um, yeah. Occasionally, you'll get crab cakes here, but never clam cakes. You know, that's yeah. By the way, you be... know, the uh, former Red Sox announced that Jerry Remy left. Uh, you know, uh, tragically, much too young, great announcer, former Red Sox second baseman for years. And in, they have something, I don't know if it's chocolate-covered ants or, or some kind of thing. They actually sell it at the ballpark. And I don't, I don't know if it was an, an ant or a, like a spider or something like that, but it was a little bit too weird for me um, wow. that they, they, they sell that Safeco. So be careful with what you know, they possibly do sell uh, at the concession stands there in Seattle. I mean, I think it was supposed to be this, you know, unique way and it maybe it's just some health yeah. nutrients but i i don't i don't want to go there nouveau culture yeah something yes, like that exactly. nouveau cuisine uh, yes. but yeah just i mean give me no, a, normally, give me a hot dog and a beer i'll be fine yeah i mean uh vietnamese soup pho is so popular in seattle people love okay. it people love thai food there's a lot of asian um sure, japanese sure. noodle houses fantastic 
pokies, you know, there's all, all sorts of great Asian food here that you don't find in most parts of the country. And we also, of course, have those incredible uh, microbrews that you don't find anywhere else. Oh, and now, um, now you're talking. Yeah, don't give me, uh, don't give me, yeah. you know, Bud Light stuff. I mean, I don't want anything to do with that. You know what? Uh, I even but, had a Rainier the other day. Rainier is supposed to be the hipster beer in Seattle, or Ranye as they as they call it in that Netflix series or whatever. But Rainier <laughs> is cheap lager. It's like, it's the beer that you buy when you're broke and you're in college and you know. You just want to have a party. You, you, it's not a, it's not a gourmet beer. So I actually had one the other day, and I'm so spoiled now that I, I really didn't like it. I, I, I think I'm, I'm ruined on lager now. Just typical mm -hmm. lagers, I can't do. I'm an IPA guy or a pale ale. Uh, they taste great. You gotta love they, the pale ale. My body seems better. You gotta love the pale ale. Yeah, I've been liking that for a long, long time. You know, I lived out in San Francisco in the nineties and you know, all those microbrews, that was the that was the first pale ales I I would uh, I would take and I've been a fan since. Hey, you know, I wanted to ask you about something that I saw, you know, quickly uh, reviewing some news this morning. And I know that Seattle was the first state along with Colorado to um, you know decriminalize marijuana. And now I hear where there is a, a major problem, and I'm wondering how much you're hearing about this in Seattle whether there's any media on it or at all. And that is the idea that the black market is uh, taking up a lot of space um, in, in trying to get underneath those who legally, you know, I remember, um, you know, when CNN had uh, the, the great uh, food expert who passed away, his name escapes me, um, and he went out there and he talked about all the entrepreneurs, men, women, people of color, you know, getting involved in, in, you know, in the dispensaries. But now I hear that there's a black market that's really destroying the credibility of sort of doing this, you know, um, within the law. And I, I, I wonder if you're hearing anything about that, Mark, because Seattle is one of the, the leading places. Uh, uh I'm, you know, I'm checking right now to see if the, there's any local stories, because I'll tell you, that's a story that I've heard um, being reported in California. Yeah. But I'm not finding it in Seattle. That's good I that mean, it's not happening just don't there. See, yeah, we don't seem to have an issue like that. I don't know how it would or what the mistakes were that they made in California. I also have not been hearing uh, about this from about uh, Colorado, which is kind of our sister state in this. But... Right. Uh, I don't know how there would be a good black market here because, at, okay, at first when the city, at first when the state made it legal, they put way too many taxes on it. There was like a 20% tax on uh, the growers, the distributors, the retailers. So it just made it too expensive. Then the black market would flourish, of course, because people were looking for uh, a cheaper way to do it. Now, the prices are so low, Jeff, um, in the state runs state sanctioned stores here. I mean, they're not state run, they're, they're private um, businesses, but you know, they're, they're licensed. No, yeah. I, I don't see why, why there would be a black market. Now, if there is, and I don't know about it, I'll check into that. But as far as I can tell, there is none. Um, the people that even were growing it for the medicinal uh, marijuana industry actually lost a lot of work after they made it legal because they had their businesses taken away. But as far as I know, I haven't heard of any um, black market activity and, and, you know, being a musician and being in Seattle, as long as I have, I think I would know because I'm pretty street smart about what's going on here. And it's, I have yeah. not heard anything like that. People get it so well, cheap. But the I mean, local, hopefully I, it's it, maybe it's a California, New York thing. And again, the, the report was talking about the fact that, you know, all the different laws, state laws, as opposed to being an all federalized. Another issue we're going to talk about another day. MTC, thank you, my friend. Thank you for help celebrating our first day back on uh, Madison. Uh, good morning, Madison. Have yourself a great day. For the rest of the country, hey, check and out my for videos. All of you, there you go, YouTube. Check out MTC. Check out my videos. Thank you, Mark. My Mother Freedom at, for all at of those, YouTube is my video. You out there, uh, thank you. Thank you, Freddie Santori and Josh, for producing this broadcast. Folks, keep on fighting peacefully. Have yourself a great weekend. Good morning, Madison. Right now, it's my time to say I'm going to go.